So I'm Susie Mountain. I'm a partner at Brodie's LLP. I specialise in family law and I am a graduate of Aberdeen Uni. Perfect, thank you. Can you tell me about your decision to attend the University of Aberdeen and what factors influence your choice? Yeah, so I actually grew up in Cornwall, which is obviously right down in the southwest of England, so really, really far away. So Aberdeen is about as far away as you can get, but that isn't why I came to Aberdeen. Um, I'd been up to visit quite a few different unis and I just, I really liked the feel of Aberdeen. I think it's a lovely campus. Um, and I actually initially studied studied English and linguistics. That's what my first degree is in. And I really liked the look of the course that they had on offer there. So that is why I came to Aberdeen in the first Perfect. place. Right, so uh, why do you choose to study uh, English and linguistics as your primary course? Well, to be honest, I didn't actually really know what I wanted to do when I left school, which I think is a lot of people are in that boat, but I really, really enjoyed English. I always enjoyed it. So I thought I would rather study something I was really interested in and then decide from there what I wanted to do. So initially it was just English that I was intending to study and we had to do a compulsory linguistics course as part of our first term, I think it was, and I found that I really, really enjoyed that. So something completely unexpected that I hadn't even really known about. Um, and so that I changed my course from then and did English and Linguistics together. So what prompted you to change uh, from English and Linguistics to Law later down the line? So I had actually thought about changing partway through, but I was enjoying English so much and I wanted to make sure I saw something through before I switched. Um, and I thought there are so many transferable skills anyway. Um, but I suppose I'm quite opinionated. I quite like a healthy debate about things. And I thought that that was quite a good match for law. And I had friends who were studying law and thought that it sounded really interesting. So like, was the main reason for, for studying law just that you found an interest in the, the debates of it? Yeah, I just, I think chatting for people that I knew, I thought that's something that would fit in with the skills that I have and, and be something that I'm interested in. I, I suppose the other thing that was in my head was journalism, but I suppose I was also quite aware that it's really, really difficult to get into a career in journalism. And I just wasn't sure at that point. I think now with hindsight, that might have been something that I could have done, but I wasn't sure enough about it at that time to go down that route. Yeah. So uh, what parts of law did you find most interesting while studying it? Um, while studying, I really actually enjoyed criminal law. I thought that was fascinating. Um, but I thought that I'd quite like to defend people, I think, but I'm a little bit afraid of, you know, prisons and things. And I knew that I would have to, as part of my role, go into prisons and interview people. And I just wasn't sure that I was cut out for that. Um, so then when I actually started my traineeship, um, I actually went to a general litigation firm and I thought that I'd be doing insurance litigation. Um, because I knew that I wanted to be on my feet, I wanted to be in court. And they put me straight into the family team as my first seat, which I hadn't really particularly enjoyed family law while I was studying it. And I thought, oh, I'm not pretty sure about this. But I found that I got a lot of contact with clients. I got a lot of time in court and I really, really enjoyed it. Next question is, did you engage in any senior organization or clubs during your time at university? While I was at university, I actually played rugby. Mm -hmm. um, and that took up actually quite a lot of my time. And what was good about that is that I played obviously for the uni, but it also meant that we ended up playing for the local women's team, the mm -hmm. Aberdeenshire Quines. And I liked that because I think I got much more integrated into Aberdeen as a whole than I would have done if I just stuck to something university related. That's perfect. That's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, so the, um, have you, the, sorry, while at university, uh, did you make any like lifelong friendships and connections and like do you still keep up with the people like to, to this day and how does that yes. like yeah. yes i do and i think that's really really important i think that's something that <clears throat> students need to be aware of because you keep these contacts and first of all they are really really good friends that you know, you've been through uni with you go through a lot of life experiences and i think a lot of change while you're at uni mm -hmm. and it's good to have those people close to you but as you go through your career those contacts are also really, really helpful and even in sort of unexpected ways. So, you know, if you're looking for a job or an opportunity comes up to do something, your uni friends will go to their network and they'll use that circle. And even now I get a lot of client referrals from people that I met while I was at uni. So it's really, really important to try and build your network as much as possible while you're studying. Yeah, that's, that's great. 
uh, what were some of your career aspirations uh, while attending University of Aberdeen and up and finishing it? So I think while I was there, when I was doing my English degree, I don't think I had a particular goal until much nearer the end when I decided that I wanted to do law instead, but I, I knew that I wanted to do well. Um, I used to make myself lists of sort of targets that I wanted to hit and things I wanted to achieve. And then, so I did my law degree in Edinburgh and then I came back to Aberdeen to do my mm -hmm. diploma. So I'd sort of made a list of, oh, I want to be, I want to get a traineeship at this place and I want to run a marathon on this date. And then I want to become a partner in a law firm before I'm 40. Do you know, I had all these lists and actually I think just writing it down, I always used to stick it to my wall. I still have them now. And then just to kind of just know that you're moving towards something. I find that quite motivating. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you. Uh, so what are some key factors that help you to keep you motivated as a student at university? I think just keeping in mind what you're ultimately aiming for. It can be quite easy to be distracted sometimes and when you've got other things going on and like say I was involved in the rugby club and it was really good fun, but I knew that that had to come second to my studying because ultimately I wanted to be at uni to do well to enable me um, to go on to other things. And I think just if you've got a good group of friends around you, then I think you'll always make sure that you keep your priorities in order. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, you mentioned that you're now working in bodies and LLP. So uh, yeah. can you describe your job and responsibilities in, in that firm? Yeah. So I I'm a family lawyer, so we deal with divorce and cohabitation law, child law, so it's quite varied. So day to day, I'm meeting a lot of clients. A lot of that's online now. Um, I go to court most weeks and I'm happy to argue things. Um, I'm also a solicitor advocate, so I have the right to appear in the court of session, just like the higher civil courts in Scotland. So um, I find that really interesting. I also have uh, two colleagues who in my team that I directly supervise, so supervising their work. We've got a really big close team and I think that's really important and makes my working life much easier. That's very interesting. And the next question is, how does your current job differ from the previous ones? Um, so since I, while I was at uni, I obviously did quite a few different jobs like most students do to kind of keep things going. Um, but when I started my traineeship, I've been with the same team that I trained with all the way through. So I trained at a firm called Simpson and Marwick, and then our whole family law team moved across the Brodies at the same time back in 2015. So I've always been with that team, but obviously the level of responsibility that I have has increased as I've, as I've gone up. And it's funny because at every stage I thought, I'm so busy, I can't possibly get any busier. <laughs> and then every time I move up, I'm like, oh no, it has, it's got busier. But you just, you become better at coping with things and better at prior prioritizing and rearranging your priorities. And it just gets easier as you go. Yeah. So um, throughout your whole career, uh, what were some big challenges, and like how did you, uh, how did you cope and like handle them all, all, all together? I think big challenges. Uh, the thing I find most frightening in my job is going to court. That's why I like it, though. It's um, and I think sometimes the best and worst things can be the same thing. So before I've got if I've got a court appearance that I really really care about. Um, which is all of them, to be honest, then I always feel really, really nervous beforehand. And I always think I'd quite like to just fall ill right now and not have to do it. And it, but it's just because you really care about it. So you discover that's actually not a negative thing. And then you get a really good adrenaline high afterwards. And it's, it's the best and worst part of the job. And you're know, sometimes dealing with people who are in really, really vulnerable, difficult situations. You know, most people don't go into a marriage expecting it to end. And it could be a really difficult time of their lives, but you get better at dealing with that, I think, just by talking to people as you would any anybody else that you meet and just really trying to empathize with what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So like looking at the current issues that you face in your career, how do they compete compared to the issues that you face in university? And in retrospect, did the university issues like really matter overall? I think it's it's all really connected, I suppose. I think that the thing that I've always found that I have to juggle a lot is to keep making sure that I know what my top priorities are and know what I'm aiming for and know what it is that I have to do to get there. And I think that all you can really do is every day just do your best with what you're doing and make sure that you have 
keep your own values at the forefront of your mind and that you're heading in the right direction. And and that's that's really all that anybody can do. It's something I try and say to my children now that as long as they go to school every day and try their best, then it will turn out how it turns out and that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. And the next question is, how would you say your mindset and way of working changed since attending the University of Aberdeen? How has it changed? That's a tricky one. I think I have to try, if I'm less interested in something, then I have to really force myself to focus on it. And I find that quite difficult. So I try to always try find the thing, find something within it that I do find engaging and do that. So um, uni helped me insofar as it was a really, really rounded experience. And there's things in my job now, like I used to really hate business development. Mm -hmm. I used to find it really, you're know, going into a room of people you've never met and networking. I used to find that really daunting. I think a lot of people do, especially at the start of their career. And I used to worry that somebody was going to ask me a legal question and I wasn't going to know the answer and what was it going to do. And as time goes on, you realise that actually everybody at these networking events is in the same boat. And actually, they just want to meet people, make connections, find people that they gel with, because that's those are the people that you're more likely to phone up and say, is this something you can help with in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so universities are often a time like personal growth, growth and exploration. So how would you say that like you changed through your time at, at university as, as an individual? And what were some big personal milestones for yourself? I think that, yeah, I mean, you change so much because before that you're at home, like you have to become so much more independent and it all happens really, really quickly. Um, I think I learned to build a network both at uni and out with uni. I learned to do that quite quickly and that has definitely really helped me. I feel really integrated into Aberdeen. Um, and I feel like, I mean, I've spent more of my life in Aberdeen than I have anywhere else now. So that's been really useful. And also just finding that commitment to your studies that you've got to be self-motivated with that. It's not like obviously when you're at school and you've got your teachers are really structuring everything for you. You have to learn to get your own systems in place to make sure that you can manage everything. Yes, thank you for your answer. And the next question is, university is a stressful time for students. Do you have any advice for st students struggling with stress? Yeah, I think the most important things with stress are just to talk to people, I think. I think sometimes bottling it up doesn't help anybody. Somebody gave me a really good tip. We get quite a lot of coaching um, because of our advocacy training and things, which is to breathe in from the top of your head and breathe it out through your feet and that that actually helps to calm your body down so if you're feeling anxious in one particular moment that those sort of breathing exercises can really help um but yeah just don't make yourself feel isolated because often if you talk about it a lot of people are in the same boat and you can't control everything so all you can do is control what you're going to do each day to get yourself through things and accept that everything else is out of your hands yeah um so while in university, did you engage in like a lot of uh, part-time jobs and internships aside from your clubs and societies? Yeah, so I always, always had part-time jobs. Um, I did all kinds of things. I did temping, I did waitressing, I did bar work. Um, and then in order to get my traineeship, I did three summer placements at different law firms. Um, and that was really valuable because that helped me to see that there different firms work in really, really different ways. And it helped me to get a really good grasp of where I ultimately wanted to work. Do you have any advice for students who are trying to get internships and like how to look and how to apply for them? Yeah, so with law, it tends to be quite structured. So you need to make sure that you timetable out really early on. So actually interviews for summer placements um, for law actually take place really, really early. So earlier than you would think. So I, I know that some of my friends missed out because they just hadn't realized how early they had to do it. So go into the websites, ask if you know people who are already in law firms, use your connections. Do you know that I think that's really important. Don't be afraid or shy about asking people because people like to help with that kind of thing. Thank you for this advice. Do you have any advice for students who are almost done with their degrees but unsure what to do next? If they're not sure what to do next, then I think obviously having a degree is going to definitely help you. And I think there's no harm in take you a bit of time to try a few things. Um, and I think that's one thing I would say when I've, I haven't changed jobs that often um, since I qualified, but 
I think that people tend to think of these things as really permanent decisions. And actually, most people in their career will go through a lot of job changes trying to find out what they like. And I think that's almost expected um, to some extent. So I think there's no harm in trying something. I mean, you don't want a CV that where you're hopping about every couple of months or something like that. But I don't think there's any harm in going into something, seeing if you like it. And if you don't, then that's fine. It's not permanent. You haven't sold your soul. You can make a change. I made a huge change going from English to law and it was the right thing for me to do. It might not have been, um, but you have to sometimes just take a chance on things. Yeah. What uh, kind of factors contributed to your success in your career of law? I think I was really lucky in having a really supportive team around me. Um, I've always had really, really supportive colleagues um, and that has made it a lot easier for me than I think some people in who haven't had the same support um, would have struggled. So I just feel um, that I've been very fortunate with that. And like I say, just try not to get overwhelmed. I think if I'd like, I have my aims, I write them down, but if I think about that too much and try to think about too many things at once, then it just becomes overwhelming. So I think just take it back to basics and think every day, okay, what am I going to do to move this on today? And you know, somebody said to me, you could only do your best in one thing at a time. And sometimes you just have to get your head down and, and get on with it like that. Yeah. Can you share some uh, advice or insights for students who are uh, trying to get in the same place where you are in their like law career? Yeah, I think speak to people. Like If people are listening to this and, and they want to have a chat, then feel free to get in touch. That, you know, I, Me and all of my colleagues would always be more than happy to share advice with people and chat things over. Find yourself a mentor. If there's somebody who is in the place that you're in, then speak to them. It's nice to have somebody who will check in with you every now and then and, and say to you, okay, that's great that you've done that. Now, how about thinking about this? And yeah, just stay motivated. Just keep your eye on the ball. Um, so many students struggle with transition from academia to the professional kind of life. And how would you uh, advise they that they navigate this transition? So it can be a transition and uh, I miss being a student actually quite a lot. I would think I was a student for about seven years. I was reluctant to uh, leave academia and um, but of course you don't have to leave academia. So if that is where your heart is, then you should go with that. Um, I think other than that, just trying to get a really good solid routine in place and make sure that you you know, if something's not working, that you adapt and change it, but try to get yourself into a really solid routine. Um, and again, I think it is a lot to do with the people that you surround yourself with and making sure they're on the same page. Thank you for this advice. And the last question for today is, if you could go back in time, would you change anything about your time at University of Aberdeen or would you give yourself any advice? What would I, I would think I would tell myself not to be so worried. I think when you're at uni, you do worry about the future. You think, okay, I'm studying this, but where am I actually going to end up? And actually where I've ended up is not somewhere that was on any of my original lists. And I never would have said to you that I'd be a partner and be doing family law. Um, so sometimes you just have to go with it and go with the opportunities that come your way.